Hi, this is Karen with Karen's Cards and More. And today we're gonna to do a really neat fun fold. Um, you can adapt this to any size. Today I'm going to do one that would fit in a standard envelope for an A2 card. That's the size that we're gonna work with today. But it's easily adaptable. And I'm going to be using the Pansy Patch stamp set, the Pansy Dies, and the Pansy Petals Designer Series paper. Um, I love this set. I love flowers in general, so I really like these pa these pansies and the fact that you can either die cut one out of the designer series paper that's already colored, you can stamp one, you can die cut one and put one together, 3D pansy. There's just lots of options here. So let me show you the card that we're going to work on. This is a called a pinwheel tower card. And you can see the inside structure is a square column, and then you have these different panels. So on mine, on the first panel, I have this 3D pansy. Then on the second panel, I have a removable tag that says happy birthday. Then on the next panel, I used some of the designer series paper and just die cut the pansies and the leaves out of that, wishing you an ex a little extra happiness just because you're you. And then the last uh, set of panels, I left a space that you could put a gift card. Just like that. And it stands like this. Now let's talk about the card itself. Um, I used designer series paper for my inside column, and I'll tell you why. It's sturdy enough, it holds the shape, it holds the card, no problem with that, but I'm mailing this. So when I flatten this down, flatten down, it's four and a quarter by five and a half to fit in the envelope. If I used cardstock, this would not flatten as well and it would be more bulky, so that's going to be more postage. That's going to be, you know, if it's not flat enough to fit through the, to be charged as a letter, then it's going to be more postage. So, um, and while, I, while I'm talking about that, let me just show you a trick. I was sending out cards for a while before I realized I probably wouldn't put in enough postage. So when you put your card in the envelope, if you take your trimmer... There's on the gauge where the, uh, on the rail where the cutter blade and the score blade go, there's an opening. And if your card inside the envelope will fit through that, and I don't have mine packaged down the way I would in an envelope, but if it'll fit through there, then you can get by with regular postage where you can weigh it on your scale and um, go by the, the ounces that way. Let me show you. Let me just take a piece of paper and slide it through. So this is about a quarter of an inch slot. And if it'll fit through there, you can use regular letter postage. If it will not through there, they're going to charge you more. Um, so that's something to think about if you want to get by with the cheapest postage. Make sure it can fit through there. And then you can go by the number of ounces if it's under uh an ounce, you can get by with one regular stamp. If it's one ounce or over, then you have to have extra postage. So just a little hint there about um, mailing your cards. So back to the card. We want to start with our inside column. And I know that that column needs to be four and a quarter long because that's the, the length of the card. Now this way, it's gonna be five and a half. But top to bottom, it's going to be four and a quarter. So I know my inside column has to be four and a quarter. Then I know my panels have to be four and a quarter. So to get the right size, so for a five and a half, you take, you've got two of these. You've got half a panel, half a panel, and a full panel. So that makes two full panels, right? So if you take the full number that you want, five and a half, and you divide it by two, you get two and three quarter. So each of these full panels need to be two and three quarter by four and a quarter. And you'll need four of those, and that's how we'll make, and it, when we put it together, it'll make the small panels. But, um, and I will put all these measurements in the description below. So that's how you figure out, so if you were doing a five by seven, you would take seven, you would need this to be five, 
And then you would take seven divided by two is three and a half. So each panel would need to be three and a half by five. And so it would be the same for any size card, okay? So let's talk about the sizes and the panels and what all we, I used for this. So we're gonna start with a piece of designer series paper that is four and a half by four and a quarter. And what I did is I cut my four and a quarter first and then I cut my four and a half so I knew, cause that's a, you know, it's only a quarter inch difference. So it looks pretty square even though it's a quarter inch difference. So I wanted to make sure I knew which side was my four and a half um, because that's the way I want to score it. So my four and a quarter, and I can put this on here to show you, four and a quarter is this way, it's four and a half across there. So on the four and a half side, the longer side, which is gonna be difficult to tell unless you just remember which side's your four and a half, you wanna score it at one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch, and that's gonna leave a half inch tab that we're gonna to use to glue. So four and a quarter by four and a half scored at every inch, leaving a half inch on the side, okay? And then you're gonna need four cardstock panels. Whatever color you're using, I'm using the pale papaya. And these are, you're gonna need four of these. And these are two and three quarter by four and a quarter. And I've just got four of those, okay? Then for these skinny sides, you're gonna need four pieces of designer series paper that are, let me see where are my other two, okay? And these are four by one and a half. Four by one and a half, and that's gonna make these strips for us. Then you're gonna need four more pieces of designer series paper that are Get these out, you're gonna need four of these. And these are two and a half by four. Two and a half by four. And you're gonna need four of those as well. Then you're going to need two pieces of basic white, and we're gonna do some stamping on these. Um, one is going to be two, and, two by three and a half, and that's gonna be for your tag. So that's gonna be this one. And this one is going to be two by three, two by three. So two by three, two by three and a half, this one's gonna be our tag, okay? And then you're gonna need a piece of designer series paper. Okay, so it's three and a half by two and a quarter, and you're gonna score a half inch on each side. The reason, because this, the final piece is gonna be two and a half, so I added an inch to make it three and a half. That gives us a half inch on each side for gluing. And that leaves this inside part being two and a half, which is what we need. And I cut mine two and a quarter. Now you could go higher or lower, depending on how um, deep you want your pocket, how far up on your designer series paper that you want your pocket to be. And then we're gonna use the smallest of the layering circles to die cut a, um, notch in it, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Then you're gonna need a piece of designer series paper that is a three by two and a half. I cut that first, and then I went ahead and scored it, and then I folded this under, did my diagonal, and then there's a little piece, let me just show you this. I've got mine already done, but I wanna show you how to get to that point. Okay, so we're gonna make this three by two and a half just like that and then we're going to score on the three inch side we want to score at a half inch Now I want to put this in my trimmer so that the top of my fold, and you can fold it if that helps you to see it more clearly. I want the top of my fold to be in the track and I want the diagonal corner 
So I'm just going to play with this until I get the top of my fold and the diagonal corner in my track. And I'm going to cut it like that at a diagonal. And what that does is this is giving me my glue strip to make my pocket. So when I fold this, you can see that I have this little extra sticking up and I'm just gonna come in with my paper snips and I'm just going to trim that even with the diagonal, just like that, to get rid of that so it's not showing. And then that gives me this strip to glue down so it's gonna fit nicely across here and my angles are gonna be correct. See that? If I didn't cut from the score line and I cut from the edge, this is gonna be off. So you wanna cut from the score to the diagonal corner and that's gonna make you this nice little pocket. And I've already got one that I had done ahead of time. Um, just like that. So, all right. Let's do our stamping and then we'll work on putting the card together. So on one, your longer of your two basic white pieces, we're gonna do both of our greetings first. On the longer one, you're gonna do the happy birthday. On the shorter one, you're gonna do the other saying, wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. Um, and I did both of these towards the middle. Well, I guess on this one, I did probably two thirds of the way down. You could do it however you want. I'm just gonna stamp some leaves around it after I do the um, uh, greeting. So I'm just gonna bring in my black memento and I'm going to ink this up. And I'm just going to put this down. Just like that. And then I'm going to come in with the other one and I'm going to ink it up. Again, I'm using black memento for this. Just inking it up. And this one I'm just going to put towards the middle. just like that, okay? And we're done with the black memento. Then I wanna go ahead and make my tag before I do my leaves, um, just because I don't wanna put leaves that I'm gonna end up cutting off. So I'm using the everyday uh, label, the label top, tag topper. And I'm just going to put this in. And I want to make sure to center it the best I can. Make sure that the tag's coming to the same side of the paper. And make sure it's flush against the top there. And I'm just punching that out. And there we have our tag. And so now we're ready to finish decorating. Now I'm gonna come in with a leaf and I'm using the soft succulent. And let me show you with the soft succulent, you have a couple different options with this. Um, it depends on what kind of look that you want. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of scrap paper So if you notice, there's a lot of softness in the, in the greens that I'm using, and I'm gonna use the soft succulent uh, ribbon as well. So I wanted my leaves to be soft, okay? So let me show you. If I stamp, I'm gonna move my tag for just a moment. Um, if I stamp this directly, with the soft succulent, there's what I get. If I stamp a second time, it's a little lighter. So I had to decide which of those that I liked for my card. And I think I like the lighter one. 
So what I'm going to do for my tag, for each leaf, I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp on the tag. I'm going to stamp off and stamp on the tag. Now, if you like the full strength, you could definitely do that. I just like the softer look. Okay, that's got our tag done. And that's just totally random. You want that to be just totally random. So we're done with this ink. And we're gonna go ahead and start putting some things together. Um, we're gonna make create our uh, focal points as we go. But let's start with our column because that's where we need to start. Now, you need to think about, because the designer series paper is double-sided, um, you can tell by the way I scored mine which side I want to be seen. I want this part to be seen. So that means that I have to fold it in. In other words, when I go over my fold, my score lines, I want to fold in because I want this to be on the inside. You will, you can see it a little bit. So if I look at this, see, you can see the designer series paper on the inside. So I wanted this gingham pattern to show instead of the other side. Okay. So then with this little half inch tab, I'm just going to come in with my stamp and seal and I'm just going to run stamp and seal down this. Make sure, yeah, that, that got it. And then I just want to fold this over so that the ends meet. And then I'm going to just go over my creases and that makes our column just like that. We have our column. That's the basis for our card. So you have an option. You can decorate these panels now or you can put them on and then decorate them. I went ahead and put them on next because that helped me visualize where my different colors needed to go um, to make sure I got the right color with the right, you know, the way I wanted them. So I went ahead and attached these next. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to flatten this. Okay, I'm just going to use liquid glue. And I'm just going to put some on this panel in between the folds on that one inch panel. And then I want to bring in one of my pieces of cardstock and I'm just going to lay it up against the fold line. Just like that. And you have a little time if you didn't get it straight, you can fold it a little bit. Okay, so then I'm just going to turn it. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm going to put this panel right up against that fold. And then I'm pressing that down. And then I'm going to go to the next one. Same thing. Putting some liquid glue. And I'm going to put this panel right up against the fold line. Pressing that down. And we've got one more to do, so we're just going to go ahead and do this while we're here. And we're going to put this right up against this fold line. Thank you. 
pressing that down. And then you'll notice So there we've got the base. Now we're ready to start designing and creating our looks. So I'm going to start with looking at my pieces and seeing what goes where. I'm going to start with this piece and it's going to go right along there. So I'm just putting the liquid glue on my strip and then I'm just kind of centering it and pressing that down. And I know that for my opposite piece, I want the leaves. So I, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Just like that. Then I'm going to flip it, and I know that I want my next, this, this piece to be the um, green checkered, which is this. So I'm gonna put this on next. And I know that I want the other side to be this piece. Now you want to make sure um, if you've got if it's going directional that you get them going all the same direction. If your designer series paper doesn't go in a specific direction, then you're okay. But um, just take that moment to check that out so you don't end up with a mishap. And I know that I want my next side, I want this piece to be the polka dot piece. So that's going to be this piece. And Stampin' Up! has so many designer series paper collections that, you know, because the colors coordinate and because the patterns coordinate and they go with stamp set, it just makes it really easy to come up with something um, to create a really cool look. No matter whether you choose the pansy theme or one of the other themes, it's real easy to come up with something. So for the this piece, I want it to be this flowered piece. And I think I like it going like that. I'm not sure that it matters. I just like the looks of it better, so. Put some glue on this. that up. Press that down. So then we got one more set of panels to do. And I know that I want this should be the last one you have cut. I want this to go here. And I know I want this to be the peach or the pale papaya gingham. So that's going to go here. Okay. 
And then really your cards put together, it just comes down to the final, whatever you want the final decorating to be um, is all we have left. So we're gonna go back to the panel that we started with and we're gonna get it ready. So I wanted to make a pocket for a tag to say happy birthday. So that's where, um, remember the tag that we, we cut and we scored and then we cut on the diagonal? That's where this is gonna go. So what I do is I just put the liquid glue on this folded piece and then I just want, move that out of the way so I don't glue it, I just want a thin strip at the bottom, just a thin line of the glue. Because if you glue too high, you're gonna glue your pocket shut. So I'm just putting a thin line of glue at the bottom, just to hold the bottom closed. And then I'm gonna fold this. And I'm just going to line this point up, line the bottom up. That's gonna have the side falling right along the edge of our designer series paper. And I'm just going to press that down. And then we're ready to work on our tag. <clears throat> so I'm just going to cut a piece of this ribbon and fold it in half. And, and this is probably six to eight inches. Um, I'm gonna end up having to trim it anyway. And I'm gonna take the tag that we already decorated and I'm going to pop this through it. And I just use my take your pick tool and I don't press hard enough to rip it. I just use it to get it started. And I'm gonna pull these and kind of straighten them as I go. And then I wanna open this and put the um, tails through. And then I'm just going to pull this, the two tails, And you can straighten it as you go. I want to kind of flip the loop a little bit so it'll lay better. And that's where you just gotta play with it. And I find that usually if I pull one leg instead of both, it helps to tighten it up better. I don't pull both at the same time. I'll just pull one, just like that. And you don't wanna pull tight enough that you rip the top of the tag. Um, and then you can leave these as long or as short as you want them. I'm going to go ahead and trim them. like that and then the tags ready to stick in there now I don't care that this sticks up a little because I can always fold that down when I go to put it in the envelope um, so I'm fine with that so let's flip it and do our next panel so our next panel is going to be our other um, greeting and we're just going to kind of center that in the middle So let's get that put on first. That looks good. And then using this designer series paper, I love that Stampin' Up! does this so that if you need to make a quick card or you just like the looks of these better than coloring them yourself or stamping them um, or putting together the 3D, if you just want to do something quick and you like their colors, you can just use the dies. Let me bring in the die set. There's um, a large and a small pansy outline that perfectly matches these um, on the designer series paper. So what I did is I just used the smaller one 
and picked a couple of these that I like to go with my paper and I die cut those and I have that already done. So I'm gonna show you that. So there's the two of those. And then there's another piece that has leaves on it. And I just picked out, one of them is kind of like taller and skinnier, and one's shorter and wider. I picked one of each that I wanted to use and I die cut those out. And that's what I'm gonna use to decorate the top left and the bottom right. You could do, um, you could decorate however you wanted to decorate it. This is just how I chose to do it. So I'm going to put, let's see, let's go with this one on the bottom and I'm going to attach this. I'm gonna kind of lay it down here and see how I want it to go, something like that. And you can play with the leaf and see how you like it. I think I like that, okay? So I always start by putting a little glue on the leaf. And gluing that to my flower. And then I'm gonna put glue on the whole thing and glue it down. Now I did not use dimensionals to pop any of this stuff up because I felt like there was enough going on with the card um, without adding more dimension. You could definitely do that if you chose to. I just didn't want to do that because like I said, this is going in the mail and I didn't think the bulk was necessary. Okay, so there, I've got that one glued down and I'm ready to go to the next one. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on my, flat, my leaf, just at the bottom. And I'm gonna glue this to my flower. And then I'm going to put glue on the whole thing. And this is going to go right up here. Just like that. And that panel's done. Now we're ready to go to the next panel. This is gonna be our pocket panel. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna crease these folds so we can see where those folds go. And I want to use the smallest of the circle dies and in the middle of this, I wanna die cut just a portion of that circle. Um, that's gonna cut out a notch to be like a, a thumb holder. So you come out with something that looks like that and it depends on how deep you cut it. Um, you could go thinner or more, however you want to do it. So now we're ready to just glue these and this will match the width of your designer series paper. So we just want to glue these down. So then I just want to put some glue on these folded strips. And then again, I'm gonna push these up a little. And then I just wanna do, make sure I'm in the camera. I just wanna do a thin line at the bottom. Not too much, just a really thin line. And I'm kinda of smushing it a little because I don't want it to ooze out all over the place. And this is gonna form our pocket for a gift card. Now, if you don't plan on sending a gift card, you could definitely um, skip this step or you could put something else besides a gift card. I just like the idea, because it's a birthday card, um, of being able to do a gift card. So, I'm going to line that up with the side and the bottom, and that's gonna put the other one just right. 
then I'm just going to press this down. And there you have your pocket for your gift card. And let me show you. I cut this to be the size of a gift card so that I know that it would fit. And it just slides down in there, just like that. Okay. Okay, so we're down to our last panel to decorate. And this is where we're going to do a 3D pansy. So I'm going to set this out of the way while we work on our pansy. So for our pansy dies, if we're going to do one of the 3D pansies, you're going to need one of these. And I did this in basic white, and I did this in basic white. So you need one of these and two of these of basic white. Then I used Gorgeous Grape, and I cut one of these, and I cut two of these, and one of these, all out of the Gorgeous Grape. One, one, two, okay? And then I used and you're going to get three of these at a time. I used um, the Daffodil Delight, and I cut my little center for my flower. And then I cut one of each type of leaf, and I did one out of Soft Succulent and one out of Evening Evergreen. So that's all the pieces that we're going to use to put this together. So I'm going to start with my um, basic white pieces. And I've already done one of them, but I'm gonna do the other two so I can show you how I did it. I'm using a sponge dauber, and I'm using Highland Heather. And on the bigger piece, and I'm gonna bring in my scrap because I like to um, kind of daub off a little bit so I don't get a big glob of ink on my piece. But I'm just doing a circular motion and I'm gonna do this until I get it as dark as I want, and you can bring it out as far as you want on the petals. Just like that. And then for the um, other white piece, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm just starting at the bottom and going up. Until I get it the shade of purple that I want and as high as I want on the flower. Just like that. That looks pretty good. I'm done with the ink at this point. Now we're ready to do some gluing. I'm gonna bring in all my pieces. Okay, let's start with the bigger piece. We're gonna glue this gorgeous grape outline. It just goes down on the outside of the, um, along the outside edge. So I'm just going to come in with my glue and I'm just doing like little dots of glue. Just enough to hold it down. Okay, and I'm going to bring this over. The fun part is trying to get a hold of it without getting your fingers in the glue. And I'm going to start with the bottom edge and get one side positioned. And then I'll, I'll just let the other fall, and it usually falls pretty close to where you want it. 
and you don't have to do much to it. And then because it's the liquid glue you do have, you can move it a little bit. So that gives us our trim on our big one. And then for both of our little ones, we're going to use these other pieces. So we have two of these other gorgeous great pieces. And we're basically doing the same thing. Just putting some dots of glue. And I found, now this may just be me, this may be the way it's designed, but I found for this piece, it's easier for me to get it lined up if I start with the right hand side. I don't know why that is, but for me, it's easier to line up if I get that right side set and then just let the rest of it kind of fall down. That just works better for me. <clears throat> Every time I tried to start with the left side, I would be off. So if, you, if you're having trouble getting it to line up, try that. Try starting with the right side. I don't know whether it's just the way my brain sees it or I don't know, but for me, it's easier to line up if I start with the right side. And then I'm going to come in. Again, I'm going to line up on the right side. And then let that fall down. Okay. Now we're ready to attach the two pieces to our flower. And this is where it, it's a lot of judgment. Um, you can decide how, how much of this you want. I mean, there's all different angles you can put these petals at. And so that's where you have to decide how you want them. Okay, so I'm gonna glue one petal first. And I want to put a little bit of glue just at the bottom of the front of it because it's going to go to the back of my other piece. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And I work a little bit fast on this part just because I want to be able to still move them if I want to. See how I'm just manipulating them? And then I'll push them together and let the glue do its thing. Okay. Now I'm ready to put this little bearded thing. I'm not sure what this is called, but this is going to line up right there with those edges of that outline of the larger piece. Getting a little bit of glue. Okay. And I just want to line that up. And then I'm going to push it down. Then I'm ready for my little, um, stamen piece and the best way I have found to do this so that's the the right side up so I just want to use the end of my take your pick tool that has the little gummy stuff and I'm going to pick that up with that and then I'm going to put my little dots of glue on it and then use this to place it I have found that's the easiest way for me to get this where I want it. Then I can use the end to kind of turn it or do whatever I want to do with it as far as that part of it. But to get it placed, that's the easiest I have found, okay? So now I'm ready to come in and I'm gonna glue this on this. And I've got my two leaves that are gonna go on here as well. I'm going to start on this one by gluing my flower down. And then I'm going to tuck the leaves on underneath. I'm 
okay? So I'm going to tuck this leaf down here. I'm just going to tuck it under the edge and press that down. And then I'm gonna put some glue on the other one. And it's just going to tuck under here. And I'm just going to press everything down. And if I see it's lifting like right there, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's glued down enough, it's not going anywhere, but I'm just going to put a little bit of glue under there just to hold that down. And there we have our card. So when it lays flat in the envelope, the, the hardest decision now is which part you want to be the front when they pull it out of the envelope. So when you lay it flat, it looks like that, but then it stands like that. So you have all these different panels. And it's really fun to be uh, creative and decorate the different panels. See what you can come up with, the pansy, um, Pansy patch dies and pansy petal designer series paper is beautiful for this kind of a design. But Stampin' Up! has lots of papers and dies and stamp sets that you could create some really cool things. You don't have to put the pockets in. You could just decorate those panels. Um, my thought was that on the tag, on the back of the tag is where I would write a message. But you could definitely... Um, you could have left this blank or you could leave one of these as a white panel or add a smaller white panel um, if you needed to write more on there. What a fun card. I hope you'll give it a try and I will be back to craft another card with you again soon.